What's up, football fans? What's going on? Max Brown back here with another breakdown for you guys. In this week's episode, it's going to be a little bit different. We're not looking at a theme from the game or a bunch of big plays. We're just going to look at one concept, one play from the game, break it down from all aspects, from Dorian Thompson-Robinson's eyes, Chip Kelly's eyes, to USC's defense, Todd Orlando, what's he thinking, all the coverages this one concept can go against and truly deep dive give you an inside peek into kind of the quarterback room and what they're looking at, what they're breaking down, and, uh, and truly dive into the play. The play is coming in the third quarter. It's the long touchdown from Dorian Thompson-Robinson to Greg Dulcich. It's the play where tight end streaking down the middle of the field. There's obviously a coverage bust. It felt like that play could have been the nail in the coffin. UCLA was up 28-23 at the time. This put them up another score. We'll break down how it happened. And the reason I'm so interested in this specific concept is this was one of my favorite concepts when I played. This is a Steve Sarkeesian, a T. Martin staple. Graham doesn't run it as much, uh, but back when I was at USC, this was maybe not day one install, but this was for sure week one install. I love this concept. You guys know from past breakdowns, I'm all about having answers. As a quarterback, give me answers. This play has all the answers you could want as a quarterback, hence why Chip Kelly loves calling it. He's been calling it for three, all three years he's been at UCLA. As a little refresher, let's go back and watch the play I'm referencing right here. Effort, what incredible concentration. Thompson Robinson goes back to the air here. Deep pass, wide open in the middle of the field is Dulcich. Trying to outrun, pull him out, and he does for the Bruin touchdown. Effort, what incredible concentration. Thompson Robinson goes back to the air here. Deep pass, wide open in the middle of the field is Dulcich. Trying to outrun, pull him out, and he does for the Bruin touchdown. All right, I'll start out by going through the progression, and then I'll tap into why this play works, why it's so effective. The progression, or I guess I'll start on the defensive side of the ball. USC lines up in just base cover three. It's very easy. Realize I just missed a guy. You had... Uh, Max Williams coming down, filling this guy. Talamo Hufunga's here, Drake Jackson's here, five defenders on the line of scrimmage. Um, so base cover three look there for, by USC, very easy to read, very easy to, uh, to process if you're Dorian Thompson Robinson. Right away, DTR is gonna work from right to left. This whole play is gonna start with a ball fake to the R. It's gonna look like outside zone to the left, which is why this play is so effective, and we'll tap into that in a sec. But it all starts with the play fake. The play fake is, is meant to displace linebackers. Just another thing for these safeties to read and to process. But right away, DT's, DTR's eyes are going to go to the right. He is reading right away of whether or not he's hot. He is going to be responsible for any blitzes on this side. If anyone were to blitz on this side, this ball would get kicked out to the F right away, right here, right now. I don't count Talanoa a blitz because he's technically a linebacker body and this offensive line, I would assume how I would teach it, they probably five down this, which, mean, which means instead of worrying about all the linebackers and whatnot, they're gonna tell this offensive line, you five, block these five. Quarterback, it's on you to manage these linebackers. We got these five, if these linebackers come, it's your responsibility to get the ball hot, get it to Kyle Phillips and move on. That's kind of his first progression. His second progression, and it's more of an alert, and you guys have heard me talk about that a few times in these breakdowns, is this is an alert. I don't necessarily count this as part of the progression, but it's certainly part of his thought process. This is an alert right here. If he gets man coverage or cover two, if he gets man coverage, and he wins, a, if he can win a one-on-one -on -one matchup, a la Tyler Bonds late in the game, Keaton Slovis giving him a little uh, alert audible and hitting this, if he gets that look, you can take this all day. He can also take this against a cover two squatting corner there and try to hit it in this whole shot there. So that's kind of 1A, 1B on the right side. He will quickly move his eyes over to the right uh, and then work from the Y on this take the middle route or a climb route, however you want to call it, back to the post curl on this side, back to the back. So it's really 1A, 1B, 2, 3, 4. And that's four progressions. This is a pure progression pass concept, meaning that no matter the coverage, his read is going to say the same. He's still going to go one to two to three to four versus other pass concepts that your eyes or where you go with the ball is 100% dictated on coverage. That's not necessarily the case here because he will stick with the progression. As we'll dive into, coverage certainly lends its hand to where the ball is going to go 
but you can at least see where I'm coming from. All right, so I'm gonna start by explaining why this play works against cover three, and then we'll tap into cover four, two, one, and zero, and I'll show you how the play would have changed based on the coverage. But as we know, USC lines up in cover three. The reason this works outside of what DTR does is because of two guys, Raylan Goforth and Isaiah Palomao. These guys get beat on this play both uh, at the linebacker position and the safety position. I mentioned that the play starts with the fake by the running back. This fake stalls Raylan Goforth's feet just a little bit. And what I mean by that is 10 has been getting hit with zone and run plays all game long, right? Both from the quarterback and the running back. And I love the game that Chip Kelly called because he forced these defenders to process much more information than they had to process against Wazoo and Utah. Against Wazoo and Utah, you know what you're getting into as a defender. Against UCLA, they mixed it up, and I love the game plan that Chip brought to the park. But right away, this run fake's coming right at him. This stalls go for his feet, and as a result, he does not get hands on Y. There is zero contact at all on this receiver, no rerouting at all, and so the Y gets to the second level very quickly. The second guy that gets beat, uh, and credit DTR on this, is uh, Isaiah Palomao. And I should have re-drew that a little bit. He's more towards this side, and right away, DTR makes that play fake, but what he does right after is he glances to his right and gives just a little shoulder fake. And that's where you can see the experience out of a junior quarterback. Not sure you're getting that out of a freshman quarterback, but he gives his eyes and a little pump to this way. That forces Isaiah Palomao to take, I don't know, three, four steps that way, and with no hands on there, with the displacement of the safety there, that is why tight end Greg Dulcich went right down the middle, not guarded whatsoever. Because of the action here, both the run fake and the shoulder fake, this is high level quarterback play right here. And don't get me wrong, this is, this is poor defense. USC's letting them get away with one right there, but that's why the play works. Stepping back a little bit in terms of cover three and what his thought process was there is he says, hey, I'm giving play fake, I'm giving shoulder fake. I know I want to displace this safety, but going through the reads, all right, 1A, this is not an option because corner's off, uh, it's not man coverage, it's not cover two. He knows before the snap even happens, this is not an option. He also knows he's not going to be hot, right? His offensive line can pick up these five. I'm not getting pressure from any of these backers. I'm not going to be hot. I don't have to go to my safety valve. This F is out. So in his mind, DTR, he knows that he can get off this right side very, very quickly and get back to the left side. And that's exactly what he does. Working now, I call, I'm call. i calling this two, and then he could have gone to three if needed, and then four um, as well down to the back. One thing to note that's unique is if this was a true cover three safety in which he was not letting anyone get deeper than him, he is the true safety at the top. Oftentimes this route, as you can see by this dotted line, kind of breaks off a little bit to go under this safety and you either hit a window right here, right here, or even on the back side of this uh, on, on the other hash. And so you can see by having a tight safety worked against the USC on this play, coupled with all the run action UCLA had done the first three quarters of the game, all right, here comes run again. You get the backer, you get the safety, you have good quarterback play, you have effective tight ends. We knew coming into this game, UCLA's tight ends were good, and that's why you have a receiver running wide open down the field for what could have been kind of the nail in the coffin type touchdown. All right, we just looked at cover three. Now let's check out cover one. At first glance, the picture looks very similar, right? You still have one high safety there. The other safety, Max Williams, is still in the same position. What did change is I put the corners uh, tighter to these receivers. And when you go cover one, which is man coverage, man coverage with one high safety, cover one, you're gonna go man here, Man here, man here, and then I guess I, I should have moved go forth out a little bit, but he's gonna be man on this Y, and then center fielder that can go any direction out here. How does this change the play? The one main difference that changes is now the X receiver is in play. I mentioned he was kind of the alert, alert against cover one. Well, what do we have? We have cover one right here, and instead of the corner being off and DTR just skipping this, pro uh, this progression, if this is a dude, if this is your man, a la Tyler Vaughn's late in the game for USC, and you like this matchup, he can do this ball fake, do a nice little gather himself, and then give this one-on-one -on -one matchup a shot right there. Everything else stays pretty much the same. The mentality for, or the, the read stays pretty much the same. The mentality for the quarterback obviously changes here, and then it changes because if you walk up to the line of scrimmage and you know you have man 
on this concept, you know, one, pressure might be coming, which means I need to get through my reads quicker. And then two, I'm now thinking, what's my best matchup? What's my best matchup? He's, he's out versus man. There's, there's, uh, there's bigger fish to fry in this concept than this, than this route right here. But if I like my Y here, I love this matchup, then I might be thinking, hey, I'm not gonna skip progression, but I gotta quickly get back to Y, see if I can give him a shot, or Z against man coverage. This route converts to just an over-the-top post ball. You're, this is home run shot right here, and if this is the winner, I've, I, as a quarterback, better get my eyes back quickly. And if this is your dude, if this is your Juju Smith-Schuster or whatever, as a quarterback, you're knowing, hey, I got to get back to uh, back to our, our go-to guy and try to take a home run shot. The last little bit that differs with man coverage, doesn't really differ, but it's just front of mind, is when you get cover one, if you don't get pressure, this back out in space can be very deadly if this linebacker gets lost. If Kanai Malga is forced to run with a, a running back and he thinks that's just a run fake and the running back's blocking, oftentimes linebackers that are not high IQ linebackers, not saying Kanai Malga is, is that way, but if you get a linebacker, a younger linebacker, they'll get lost in the shuffle with so many bodies here, a run fake, a running back being savvy and pretending to block for a half second that oftentimes on this concept, this running back is wide open in the flat, and it's just a matter of uh, getting them the rock. So we started with cover three, now that's the difference with cover one. All right, we've talked cover one, we've talked cover three, now let's talk about this concept versus cover two. What changes? I've starred the three areas that to me change the most with both the coverage and how the offense and the defense reacts. First start here. We've talked about this route being alert. Well, it's also an alert versus cover two, but in a different way. Now, this is more of a whole shot alert in which you are trying to fit the ball on a line in between a squatting corner and a safety running over the top. Both these safeties are running over the top, a la cover two, each having deep half responsibility. So right away, DTR, if he feels like he can fit this ball in there, there uh, this receiver gets a clean release, uh, this safety soft and you can fit this ball in there. He can rip this all day um, And this is a big league throw if you see a quarterback Rip a cover two hole shot that kind of means he's operating at a high level But from there what changes is the middle grass instead of having Isaiah Palomao as the only Single high safety now you have two safeties and I use Max Williams here. This might be Tal Noah I put Tal Noah here but based on the personnel grouping that they had in this play, I adjusted accordingly. But now the middle of the grass is right in the middle, but he would take the middle of the grass rather than trying to streak up the middle of the field. Just kind of a different route, a different mindset by the Y right here. This ball would be on a line. You'd be trying to fill this gap uh, in between or underneath the safeties out here. So that's kind of the second main change. And then the third change on the outside is before this Z receiver had a post curl on the backside. So you went 1A, 1B, 2, 3, 4. Well, 3, instead of it being a post curl, this Z is trained to adjust on the fly. If he senses a cover 2 corner, which means this corner is squatting on the outside, which means this safety is high over the top. If a Z receiver senses that, which the more you play football, it's not that hard of an ass to do for a Z receiver, then this receiver, instead of doing a post curl, will keep it vertical. Why do you keep it vertical there? To put more pressure on this safety. If you ran a post curl, now Isaiah Palomao, he can kind of guard both, right? He can hang out here and try to jump, uh, uh, take the middle route by the Y, or he can hang here and try to jump a curl. You want to put these defenders in an absolute bind. And so by keeping this vertical, you force 21 to commit to either side, and then obviously opening up the other guy. The last point that changes in cover two, and I should have put a star here, is right when I walk to the line as a quarterback, if I know I'm getting cover two, I know this picture is gonna be soft. I know I'm probably only getting four guys rushing. I know these backers are dropping, dropping, dropping. I have two high safeties. I have corners sitting and waiting and trying to get involved. This picture could get really soft, and anytime that happens, Check down. The check down alert in your brain should go off. As a quarterback, I'm saying, hey, I'm going to get through my progression, but I know I got my running back right here as a safety valve. If everything gets soft, I'm just going to dump it out to him on the left-hand side and see what he can do, even if it's a short gain. Just get completions. Completions lead to first downs. First downs lead to touchdowns. So that's kind of how the, uh, the play changes versus cover two or the mentality changes against cover two.
All right, we've talked cover one, two, and three. Now we're on cover four. What stays the same? The read stays the same. You're going 1A, 1B, 2, 3, and 4. What changes on the defensive side of the ball uh, to start is the secondary. In cover two, you have two corners on the outside that are guarding the flat. Now it's cover four, meaning you have four guys deep. So he's responsible for deep fourth, deep fourth, deep fourth, deep fourth. You're having more defenders allocated to the back end and you're putting a little bit more pressure on these backers. Instead of having, I don't know, five guys underneath, now you're only having three guys underneath, which just kind of makes it tougher. And for the full picture, I'll kind of draw how they would drop. Here, that's kind of the, the, the base look at it. Reed stays the same, coverage differs. One of the big differences right here is the safety depth. Instead of them being high and not letting anyone get past them, they're going to be closer to the ball. They're going to be 10, 12 yards to the line of scrimmage, just inside shade of the number two receiver on either side. One, two, one, two on either side. These safeties are looking to drive on dig routes, get involved in the run game, both factors that are closer to the line of scrimmage. But going through the read here, it's the same running back fake by DTR to the back. On this side, both these concepts are dead. It's not man coverage, he's not hot, they're not bringing pressure from this side, so you don't need to go to your safety valve. It's not a super advantageous look for this man, for this concept over here. So he will quickly get his eyes back to the left-hand side. He'll still take his eyes to the right just to stay disciplined with the read, see if he can displace some linebackers, but he's quickly gonna get over to the left-hand side. And the reason I circled Raylan Goforth right here is this whole entire concept is putting a lot of pressure on this Will linebacker right here. Because put your shoes in 10 spot right here. He's gotta manage a run fake to his side. So he's gotta dissect the line movement and the running back movement. But then from there, he is going to get high load and coverage right after that. Against a good safety, this route should get swallowed up. Isaiah Palomao's right there. Yes, some tight ends will win. Some slot receivers will certainly win on this if they twist the hips of the safety. But against a good safety, this should be out. And then so from there, you're going progression 1A, 1B. Two's not there. Now you're going over to three. And right here is to my point, this Will linebacker is getting high load. If he drops back and gets underneath this uh, post curl route, then this back's going to be wide open in the flat. There is no one out here. If this linebacker is saying, oh, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you, get the running back, and he crashes down here, then there's going to be a huge vacant window for the post curl right there. This is why I like this concept, is you have all these answers going from right to left. Puts a lot of pressure on the linebacker. And with all these coverages, you don't necessarily say, hey, this concept is great against this one coverage. No, I would say it's good against all the coverages, which is very nice to have as a quarterback. The last little point I want to touch on, and you saw in the, in the cover two picture how this Z converted his route. Well, when I played at SC, Sark and T, they loved tagging this backside receiver. So this concept's called fire flame, depending on fire right, flame left. Uh, but they would do flame and then Z whatever, or they would tag a certain concept. But what I mean by that, or they would tag a certain route. And what I mean by that is, so right here we're seeing a post curl. Well, you could do a post corner. You could call a traditional post. So there's one, two, three different backside routes you can do based on how this corner is playing. Every corner is going to be different. Some guys will be aggressive and they'll try to climb on this hook curl route. Some guys will be soft trying to play over the top and it might be advantageous and now I'm getting messy with the, uh, the drawing. But if a corner is playing over the top, it might be worth coming back here and trying to get something uh, towards the back end of the sideline. It's a concept Chip Kelly's ran a long time. It's a concept that we ran all the time when I was at SC. It's a great football play. I'd be willing to go to bat and say this was the most popular football play in like 2014 or 15. It's still around, but it's a cool concept and you can see why a lot of coaches love it because you give your quarterback answers. And as an offensive coordinator, if you don't know the coverage you're getting or you're facing a Todd Orlando defense where they're gonna bring the whole bag of tricks, let's just roll out this concept and, uh, and give your quarterback answers and weapons to uh, attack this defense. So with this in mind, U USC got the win, but uh, I love the game that Chip Kelly called. Love the game Graham Harrell called as well, but this one concept stuck out to me because uh, I feel like I have skin in the game with this concept because uh, I ran it all the time back in the day. But cool to watch that. It'll be interesting to see if Oregon uses a similar concept this week when facing the USC defense. But uh, without further ado, 
that's uh, that's this week's breakdown. Thanks for checking it out, and I'll uh, I'll see you next week.